I, I'd, I'd say just direct it to the link tree. We are live. Okay. And if I don't get to do that tonight, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, I have a hard out at seven because I gotta go. Uh, I have a comedy competition tonight. Okay. Well, I mean, my review won't be extremely long, or we can scale back or omit gaming history. Okay. Sounds. Good. It's up to you. I'm I'm good with whatever. I've been up since four thirty this morning, so <laughs> I'm good with whatever. I know I've been up pretty early. I get up pretty early these days too because it's so freaking hot. I go to I go to work early and leave early. Well, and the the thing is, like I up until yesterday, I didn't have a guest for my show. Sorry, <laughs> I was just checking Twitch. Oh, no worries. No, I didn't. My guest for my show didn't confirm until yesterday, and I knew they were in the UK, so I was like, "Well, I'll just wake up early." Yeah. And then record it, schedule it to go online at the time it normally does. And after we finish with NCR, I'll just chill here. So early. That's, that's early to be podcasting. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was a little rough start, but it, it turned out pretty can good. Can you turn your... Uh, you're coming in a little bit hot. Can you turn your okay. mic yep. down just a little bit? Audio check. One, two, three, there four, five. That's good. That's just a good li- little right too hot. Little, in little too hot. On what from like one to ten, it was. I feel like it was a ten point five. <laughs> just needed to come down just just a hair. Yeah. What's up, Tyler, in the chat room? What's going on, Tyler? All right. The uh, fact checker to the fact checker. Yeah. So I've got everything pulled up, and I think I've got all my levels ready to go. Oh, I yep. took today off. Must be nice. I wish I could have taken it. Nice. Off. Yeah. Same here. But yeah, I'm I'm good to go whenever you're ready. I got everything Alrighty, open. Alrighty, here we go. In three, two. Oh, actually, before we do that, um, for everybody watching this on YouTube, I want to throw this up real quick. The video games monthly logo. If you can go to videogamesmonthly.com, if you want to expand your retro gaming library or gaming library in general, head over to videogamesmonthly.com. Get whatever tier you want every single month. They're going to send you games in a box. It's like Christmas every single month over there at videogamesmonthly.com. And you go to to checkout, and they have a little drop-down menu that says, How did you hear about us? You type in NCR, and guess what? You're going to get a free game in your first month's box. So videogamesmonthly.com, NCR, and the Where Did You Hear About Us logo. Uh, and where did you hear about us, box? And you get a free game every single month. And don't forget, brezcoffee.com. Brezcoffee.com. Uh, brezcoffeeco.com. You head over there and you type in NCR at checkout and you get 10% off of your order. And if you're a gamer and you like to stay up all night gaming and you need that extra boost, you need some brez coffee in your life. So go do that. Go do that right now. Pause this. Go do that. And then come back and listen to the show. So, sounds good. <laughs> All right. Well, here's the show. Here we go. In three, two, one. Programs, and we're back for another episode of the Nerd Cave Retro Show. My name is Jason Robbins. And my name is Derek Diamond. So how did you uh, enjoy our show from last week? I hope everybody listened to it. If you haven't, go back and listen to last week's episode. We had the Retro Runner himself on the show. And if you've never like speed run a game before, or if you're interested about it, that is the show to go listen to. Yeah, and it's speed running is something I don't know a ton about. Like, obviously, I know of its existence, but don't really know too much beyond that. But you know, it was it was a very educational show, you know, for me and getting to pick his brain on, you know, what got him into it. And funny enough, the the first game that he ever speed ran is the first game I ever saw speed ran at a comic convention several years ago. So that was kind of a cool little tidbit. But it was a fun chat. Yeah, and uh, I know you've been up pretty early today you're for 
feature presentation your guest was in england <laughs> so you yeah had to get up pretty early today yeah we recorded the interview at 6 a.m so i've been up since 4 30 um but it's it's gonna air at normal time as if it were a live show but both the video and the audio version uh will be out at eight o'clock tonight but we got to talk about the most important thing that happened mm -hmm. since we did a show you and wally got some pretty incredible news for monsters anonymous so why don't you tell the listeners what happened so we won best comedy at cans shorts film festival which is pretty ridiculous <laughs> is the only thing i can say and I, i'm flabbergasted and i can't believe six years after we made that movie it's still winning awards at award shows and especially something like the cans shorts film festival that's like like we can go to bed saying we're cans winners like that's crazy yeah when you texted me and wally i, I had the exact same reaction as him like th like the cans yeah. film festival <laughs> because for those who may not know it's one of the upper tier like most prestigious film festivals in the world so I mean, it was a big deal to just even get selected, but, you know, let alone win in your genre. That's incredible. And I couldn't be happier for both of you. So I don't, I don't know. I don't even, I still honestly don't even know what to think. I, I don't even know if it's really even hit me yet. And I, that's why I didn't even bring it up yet. I, I would have started with that, but honestly, it's like, <laughs> it, it I, I don't even know what to think about it. Like, what do I, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with my hands? What do I do? <laughs> I, you guys have got to make something else now. I guess so. I can't, can't be riding yep. this train forever. <laughs> well, like... and that, that, I, I think, you know, I speak for a lot of people in the fact that, you know, you guys have won this prestigious award is, you know, what what's going to be coming up next. So I'm I'm just like everybody else. I'm excited for both of you. And I, I don't mean this to disparage any other filmmakers, but there's a short list of those that I think truly deserve the success and you and Wally are both on that list. Well, so thank you. Good I, I'm, I'm, I'm so proud for you both and couldn't be happier. Well, we've got one more festival and, and I really appreciate it, by the way. You know, that's that's I, I mean, you've been there since the beginning. We've been friends since even before, you know, Monsters Anonymous was a thing. And, you know, we our love of movies and video games brought us together and just kind of. We've taken a weird journey the last couple of years with making our own short films and just watch like winning awards. And it's just been such a weird, cool thing, you know, mm -hmm. like to, to know that I made something like that with people that I grew up watching in movies is, is still like I made a movie with Brian O'Halloran. And, and because of the Cannes Film Fest, the, the, the win this week, me and Jeremy actually buried the hatchet and became friends again so you know like magic happens i guess yeah no absolutely but uh we've got one more festival i'm waiting on this will be the last festival i ever submit us to and it's the uh it's kevin smith's smod castle film fest so i figured since we've got jeremy london and brian o'halloran in the movie we should give me a leg up in that competition or that festival so hopefully we'll get into that. If we do, I'll be I'll be going up to Jersey for a couple of days for that festival. But uh, keep my fingers crossed. We won't hear till the end of the month. So if we don't get in, that's fine. I mean we've we've won plenty of awards and done a lot of cool stuff. So if, if we don't get in, that's fine. But this is the very last festival that we're ever going to uh, to submit to. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we get in. I mean. I think you guys will, but in the event you don't, I mean, Cairns is a good one to go out on. Yeah, so. that's, that's pretty prestigious. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, we got a we got quite a few news tidbits to get to this week. Are you ready to jump into the news? Let's do it. Here we go. Today's stories were submitted to us by Mr. Armez Jackson, and I am the Rampage. If you have Rampage! a story you'd like us to cover, send them to nerdcaveretro at gmail.com. And the first story tonight comes from comicbook.com. New Atari collection comes with over 90 retro games. 
Atari's anniversary, anniversary announcements continued this week with the reveal of Atari 50, the anniversary celebration collection of over 90 games spanning the many years of Atari releases. Including in that list of games are six new ones, too, that consist of new releases and well-known series as well as remade versions of older games. Uh, let me scroll down here and just go over some of the... Uh, let's see, we got Sword Quest Air World... Uh, Haunted Houses, the original Survivor game for the Atari 2600, gets a modern 3D voxel-based sequel featuring more houses, more spooky situations, and more urns. I would get it just for that. I used to love Haunted House when I was a kid. Even though I didn't know how to play it, I still loved playing it. Um, let see. We have Neo Breakout, Quadra Tank, and Yars Revenge Reimagined, Howard Scott Warshaw's masterpiece gets a whole new look, and you can swap between original and modern graphics at any time. Designed by Digital Eclipse studio head Mike Micah, that's a name right there, <laughs> uh, who created the Game Boy Color version on uh, in 1999. So I'm kind of excited about this. I wasn't excited about, you know, 90 Atari games is like, eh, there's what, like five good Atari games? But... With these reimaginings, I mean, just Haunted Houses and Yars Revenge and Reimagined are just those two are enough to make me want to purchase this. I feel like every year we get some type of Atari collection that's just loaded with games, but then you're like, ah, are any of them really worth getting yeah. the collection for? Like you said, the reimaginings, I think, make it worth it. And on a lighter note, I feel like as much as we've talked about it on this month in gaming history, we owe a Yars Revenge review. So oh, I think we we should do a dual review of Yars Revenge. I I think so. That's exactly what I was thinking. So I, I'll be honest. That's actually one of my probably. I only have about five <laughs> favorite Atari games, and that's one of them. That River Raid um, uh, Adventure was pretty good. Um, Yar, I see Yar's Revenge. Oh, oh, Missile Command. Missile Command was good on Target yep. 2600. Yeah, I think I'll pick this up. Yeah, I, the, the reimaginings have sold me on it. When I first read the article, I'm like, eh, this is just another collection. Yeah. But I, I think this will be worth it. Yeah, as soon as I saw those, I was like, eh, this guy just got a lot more interesting. Our next story comes to us from NintendoEverything.com. Formula Bit Racing DX to debut on the Switch uh, this week, which this was released. Uh, it's actually released on July 8th, so it's already out. Mm -hmm. uh, Formula Bit Racing DX is an arcade racing title that's influenced by the classic arcade racing games of the early 90s. More information can be found on the overview, which to quickly go over it, each curve and each lap in Formula Bit Racing DX recreates classic arcade gameplay and offers you unbound speed limits of fun. Featuring the fast and exciting gameplay that the genre is known for, Formula Bit Racing DX captures the essence of the old school racing games with crisp, low poly visuals, retro soundtrack and high speed action. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to watch the trailer, I get RC Pro-Am vibes. Yeah from this game so it's only uh let's see it's only five bucks yeah it's not on the switch eShop. so if you like racing games i think it's worth picking up it looks cool i like the soundtrack that they included mm -hmm. with the trailer so it looks for pretty five fun bucks to me. you know i like old school racers like this and for five bucks that's not bad at all no so I, I think you know if it's something that you know if i'm looking for something quick to play i might chill out five bucks for this oh yeah uh, our next story comes also from NintendoEverything.com. 2D action adventure RPG Dreamed Away announced for Switch. Dreamed Away, a 2D action adventure RPG, has been announced for Switch. Publisher Pineapple Works and developer Nicholas Petten announced that the game is set to arrive in Q4 2023. Uh, it takes place in France in the 90s and has you playing as Theo, a boy lost in a dark, mysterious world, and is trying to find his sister. Game puts the focus on the bond between siblings, fear of death, and questioning reality while offering immersive storytelling in a diverse setting with a vibrant color palette and varied uh, environment. This kind of gives me... Um, what vibes does this give me? Like, uh, hmm. it, it gives me a lot of vibes. Like, it gives me Earthbound vibes with yeah. a, maybe a little bit more advanced graphics. The setting very much is like Earthbound. Yeah, but it's definitely darker, like a darker yeah. 
uh, earthbound, maybe a little bit of uh, a little bit of maniac, not maybe maniac mansion. I don't know. It's it, I'm getting some vibes from this, but I, I don't know exactly what vibe I'm getting from it. I'll go ahead and say it on the show because I know this is like a year and a half away from coming out. I'm getting this game. Yeah, <laughs> I, I saw the screen cap and I watched the trailer and I'm like, I want it. The, it these it reminds me of the games that I would play in the 90s for the Super Nintendo, like yeah. Earthbound. You know, all the RPGs that I've talked about incessantly on the show. I get all the vibes from this, so I'm mm. I'm already sold. I'm I like games it. that have a mood, and this game seems very moody. Yeah, and not a lot of those RPGs, at least the ones that I played, they didn't have a very dark vibe. Mm -hmm. This has a darker vibe, so I think, you know, this this could be really cool. It yeah. could be a really cool game. Well, we still got a year for it before it comes out, but I'm uh, very interested. Maybe you could do a review on it when it comes out. Yeah, I think so. From NintendoLife.com, creator of Philips CDI game Hotel Mario talks getting approval from Nintendo. The Philips CDI is one of those rare consoles that has the distinction of having played host to a few officially licensed Nintendo games, and not just any old Nintendo licensees either, but Zelda and Mario. The less said about Zelda, the better. The latter of the two only got one game on the system, Hotel Mario, which is often considered one of the worst Mario games, but the creator of the game has shared some insight into developing a Mario game for the CDI. Uh, he says he had to get approval from Nintendo with a lot of things that we did, they wanted to be sure the world that we created looked like it belonged to the franchise as anything portrayed in Hotel Mario was a reflection on them. Uh, they were pleased as far as I know. In fact, there were rumors that Nintendo wanted to bring Hotel Mario to their platforms. I'm going to be honest. I have not heard of Hotel Mario until this moment in time. I have heard of it before, but I know all those CDI games are basically just absolutely objectively terrible like the zelda games and the mario games i don't know what nintendo was thinking around this time because there's a whole we could do a whole episode just on this era of nintendo from where they you know basically was working behind the scenes with sony on the the nintendo the nintendo playstation and then mm -hmm. screwed over Sony for no reason and went with Philips for the CDI. And then Sony said, oh, yeah, well, screw you, Nintendo. And then created PlayStation, which arguably ate Nintendo's lunch for the next 20 years. So we could do a whole episode on just that. But these CDI games, I've never played them myself. I didn't know anybody that had a CDI, but I have seen gameplay of them. And they just look crappy. If you're curious, go on YouTube and search Zelda Philips CDI. You'll probably regret it, but at least then you'll have confirmation <laughs> that those games were terrible. I've watched about probably a combined 30 seconds of video, and that's all I needed. Uh, uh, and Tyler in the chat room says, okay, I need a rant game month where y'all review the Dark Triforce, a.k.a. the CDI Zelda games. If there's a way I could play that game, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a, a ROM I could get from somewhere. I'd be willing to play it, but I can guarantee you I'm not going to get more than about three or four minutes into it. If that happens, I can't let you travel down that dark tunnel alone. <laughs> uh, I don't uh, even know if you if you could even, like, do is it, I mean, do CDIs even still, like, are they, like, do people still sell them, like, in the in the... You know, in eBay and stuff. I've never even looked one up. Like, I've never had any interest in obtaining a CDI. I'm sure they do. I I, I bet there's a small, like, following of people that love like those hardcore games. hardcore people that are just like, CDI was the best ever. <laughs> it's like some people talk about, you know, like, movie A is pure <laughs> cinema. Yeah. CDI is pure gaming. Ugh. If you ever looked up the CDI, look up that controller. Like, what were they thinking? Like, I sound like the uh, uh, AVGN. Like, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? That controller was terrible looking. Oh, one of the worst controllers ever. Like, <laughs> that, and that, that's that's yeah. no, like, no debate. No, whatsoever. just go look up a picture of it. If you're listening to this right now, just go Google uh, Philips CDI 
uh, controller. And you're like, how how do you, how do you use this? Like, how do you use this for a game? It's one of those things that, like, I would love to be a fly on the wall to find out who said this is a good idea. <laughs> yeah, who approved that? Say, so, yeah, go with it. Uh, and then this next story comes from CNET.com. Nintendo Switch Online, another Pokemon N64 classic, joins Retro Game Library next week. Uh, if you buy the original Nintendo Switch, uh, the little Switch Lite, or the fancy Switch OLED, you'll have absolutely heaps of stellar games to choose from. However, if you want online multiplayer games and a library of retro N64 games uh, and Genesis titles, you have to sign up for a Switch Online subscription service, blah, blah, blah. We all know this. Let's see. Um, the SNES... Hold on. Uh, I'm trying to, like, bounce around this article here. See, Pokemon Snap joined the lineup last month, and Pokemon Puzzle League, here it is, which originally came out on N64 in 2000, will come out on Friday, July 15th. Uh, we've just gotten recently uh, Earthworm Jim 2, Dig Dug 2, and Mappy Land joining the list of classics. These are available in a standard membership, so you don't need the expansion pack tier to play them. So what do you think about Pokemon Puzzle League? Is that one of your your games you've played in the past? Never played Pokemon Puzzle League. Surprisingly enough, I remember it very vividly. I remember seeing it in the stores. I remember seeing it advertised in magazines. But I just, I, I wasn't, outside of Tetris, I wasn't that big into puzzle games. So is it, is it like so, a match three game? What, what kind of game is it? To be perfectly honest, I'm not entirely sure. It's been a while since, and I, I didn't watch the trailer that was in the article. But yeah, I didn't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the Pokemon expert here. I mean, you're you're somewhat. You're more of an expert. You're way more of an expert than I am. Maybe maybe next time we talk about Pokemon, we should have Tyler on because I know he's a big Pokemon guy too. Yeah, we should. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think it's cool that they're adding more, but. Yeah. He says I mean, in the chat room he has a complete inbox copy of Pokemon Puzzle League. So yeah, he would be the guy to talk to. Yeah, that's he's doing much better than me <laughs> in, in that regard. So our last story, this is actually this awesome is so cool. news. Oh, I I can't <laughs> wait. From Kotaku.com, new Robocop and Terminator games are coming. Publisher Nakon or Nakon announced some new games today, and among them are Robocop Rogue City, an upcoming FPS starring the famous cyborg police officer from the 80s, and Terminator Survival Project, a survival game set in that universe's bleak, machine ruled future. These are bought before we even go any further. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. So I'll, I'll just say this about Robocop the graphics look gorgeous. I love the um, the lock on tech that was used from the movie. Yeah, and most importantly, Mr. Peter Weller himself yes. is doing motion capture and the voice. <laughs> like Peter that's Ryan, all I needed you're to know. With me. <laughs> like that's all I needed. Like I'm I'm getting this game when it comes out, but I am a little more excited for the Terminator just because like I'm more familiar with that universe. But that trailer, even though it was very quick. I loved how they used the original Terminator theme from the first movie that doo -doo, doo -doo, mm -hmm. doo -doo, doo -doo. it just I, I heard that and I'm just like just here the, you know money. how much I love survival horror games I love them that's one of my favorite genres why they have never done a survival horror game in the Terminator universe is beyond me like I am so psyched about this game like this is the number one game i'm looking forward to next year and the fact that specifically it's in the future yes when machines have taken over i mean i'd still play it if it was set in present day or heck in the 80s or 90s but the fact that you're in that dystopian future where skynet rules everything and you're having to run from these machines is just uh and I'm not a huge fan of survival horror games, but this one I am getting. This just because it's the Terminator. If there's anything that can actually still frighten me, is the thought of a Terminator coming after me. So being mm -hmm. putting that in a game, a survival horror type game, I am like they. That's all they had to say was just a survival game set in that universe's bleak, machine ruled future, and I'm there. Uh, they've already got a copy sold. It's already sold. Just take my money. Yeah, just all of yep. it. 
you've sold two copies of each game that was <laughs> mentioned there. in this article because I'm getting both. Better alive, you're coming with me. You're can't coming wait. with me. Can't wait for RoboCop. So awesome. Uh, it looks so good. Ah, good games coming next year. Uh, mm -hmm. And now it is time for this month in video game history. In July of 1980, something I just talked about a minute ago, Atari Inc. releases the Cold War-inspired Missile Command, which is arguably probably the best game for the Atari 2600. I was going to say it's regarded as pretty much like the consistent best Atari game ever made. Because even though it's not as fast-paced as the actual arcade game, because, you know, the arcade game had the trackball, and there was no trackball attachment for the Atari 2600, but... Playing it with the you know the the joystick was pretty good, even though it was a little slow. But honestly, I kind of like the slower pace of it because the arcade game would just get ridiculous with how quick those missiles were coming in. So I've heard. Uh, July fifteenth of nineteen eighty three, Nintendo releases the Family Computer, aka Famicom, console in Japan. Never heard. Shortly of it. after, yeah, uh, it's. <laughs> Very, very, it's like a cult following that that thing has. Uh, shortly after its release, complaints begin to surface about rampant system instability, prompting Nintendo to issue a product recall and to re-release the machine with a new motherboard. It would later be released worldwide as the Nintendo Entertainment System, a.k.a. the NES. I would love to have uh, a Famicom, but there, uh, I, never, I don't think I've ever seen one in real life, like an actual Famicom. No, I've seen plenty of pictures, but I've never seen one in person. A dream of mine would be to have like a, a wall in this room to have like shelving with every console yeah. ever made would be sick. Just have a TV in the middle and like a little switch switchboard for like which which console you want to use. That would be cool. And there's got to be some kind of like adapter that has all the all the necessary cables. Yeah, I have a switch box for all my stuff. It, it only hooks up four. I have one that hooks up four different consoles, so I just switch back and forth. But, yeah, they make those. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, July 13th of 1987, Konami releases Metal Gear for the MSX2 home computer platform in Japan and Europe. I still need to go back and uh, review the original Metal Gear for the Nintendo. A franchise that we have never reviewed on this show. Never. No Which is... Pretty surprising. It's funny because, you know, you, you think of how long we've been doing the show and we're like, oh, we've reviewed so many games. Yeah. But there's still so many that we haven't even scratched haven't even, the surface on. We haven't even done like a quarter of the games that we could do. Yeah. Uh, see, July 27th of 1990, Nintendo releases one of your favorite games, Dr. Mm -hmm. Mario, for three Nintendo platforms. Still say Dr. Mario is one of my favorite puzzle games of all time i mean it's up there tetris is still number one but dr mario is a solid number two i think so too yeah, I uh, and solid number two <laughs> <laughs> at least it's not a running number two yeah <laughs> gross <laughs> uh and our last one for the night july 14th 1993 uh super mario all-stars is released via super nintendo in japan Featured upgraded 16-bit versions of the first four Super Mario games. Also, Super Mario Brothers: The Lost Levels makes its debut in the Western region. And I still have my copy of this. I'll still say my favorite way to play the original Mario games yeah, is on Mario All-Stars. There's something special about the NES versions because they came first. And they have that very distinct look and the music and everything. But I just like playing Mario All-Stars more. Like, that's how I played Mario Brothers 3 for the first time. Plus, you get to play it with the Super Nintendo controller, which arguably is the the Mac Daddy of all controllers. It's top three, for sure. But uh, that brings us to our patron shout-outs for the night, right before we go into our review for this evening. So, Derek, would you like to do the honors and shout-out our patrons? Absolutely. We want to shout-out our awesome patrons over at patreon.com slash nerdcaveretro. Mr. Daniel Salmon, Tyler Watson, Axeblade 07, Armez Jackson, Hand Solo, Carlos Longoria, a.k.a. Rampage, Rampage. Staff Sergeant Sketch, Gus and Penny, Matthew Salmon, 
Mike Eveland, Brandon Rutledge, and Joey Image. Thank you all so much for your continued contributions and keeping the lights on for us here at the Nerd Cave Retro Show. And if you want to be a part of our Patreon community, you get early access to our fun commentary tracks. Our most recent one is actually one of my favorites that we've done, uh, mm-hmm. Star Wars, Clone Wars, and Rebels. It was, I, I felt like we talked about the shows enough but yeah. still had the fun banter that everyone loves. It's almost like we're, we have, it's a whole separate podcast of us just reminiscing about stuff while tangentially watching an episode of something. Yeah. It's like, Oh, there's, there's yeah. star theater. <laughs> hey, look, there's, but, yeah, any, but, but anyway, anyway <laughs> this, this game I played in the nineties, it was so great, but yeah, you get access to other great tracks too. Like, full length movies like clue national lampoon's Christmas vacation, super Mario brothers, shows such as, as I mentioned, rebels and clone wars, X-Men, the animated series, gargoyles, Darkwing duck. The list is near about endless with the commentary tracks that we've done. So if you want to be a part of our awesome Patreon community, just head over to patreon.com slash nerd cave retro. And for new patrons, be sure to send us your social media information, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, so we can give you a proper shout out. And usually this is where I would play the music, but I forgot to capture music for tonight. So I'm just going to sing. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot to capture music. Not, I went to go play it. And I'm like, where is it? Like, oh, damn it. I forgot to capture it. Oh, uh, it's all good. I do like the music in this game, though. It, it is quite uh, jaunty and catchy. Yeah. If you will. So the game I'm going to be reviewing for tonight is Bonk's Revenge, which is a 2D platformer set in prehistory, originally for the PC Engine slash Turbo, Turbo Graphics 16 console, created in 1991 by the Red Company for Hudson Soft and licensed by, is it NEC or NEC? I think it's just NEC. That's the way NEC. I've always pronounced it, just NEC. <laughs> It would be a, it would be weird to have a company named Neck. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be a little strange. So this is the sequel to Bonk's Adventure, which I reviewed. And it's crazy to think almost a year and a half ago mm-hmm. on the show. I reviewed it in February of last year. Um, played this on the Turbo Graphics Mini, which was uh, gifted to us by Mister Axe Blade O Seven. Mm-hmm. And I've been pretty busy the last couple of weeks, so I've been kind of struggling on what to review because I, I've got a couple of games that I've been playing, but I want to spend more time with them before I give a more in-depth review. And then we had the conversation with Axe Blade 07 on Twitter. And I was like, you know what? I never went back and played Bonk's Revenge. So I've been playing that over the last few days and I've actually quite enjoyed it. Um, I, everyone knows I'm a sucker for a good platformer from the late eighties, early nineties. This plays very similar to a Mario game in the sense that it's a 2D side-scrolling platformer. You have items that you can collect. You have power-ups that make you you stronger for periods of time. Uh, It plays exactly like the original Box Adventure, if you ever played that one. Uh, The story is a little bit different. In this one, the first game, you had to rescue a princess. In this, you have to recover half the moon. (laughs) <laughs> which was stolen by the evil King Drool the uh, Third. It's multiple stages, each contain several specific areas, which I, I really like about these old school platformers is that you have such a variety of stages and worlds you go to. So mm-hmm. when the game starts, you're in this like greenery waterfall garden type area. Well, I remember when I played these when when I had the the turbo graphics for a little while. I played both Bonks and Bonks Revenge, and I I didn't get to play them for very long, but I do remember that I think I liked this one better than the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's how I felt, you know, a- after playing this game. I haven't completed it, but I got pretty far into it. There's not a ton of difference between the two, but I like the level design yeah, of I, this game a little bit like, better. I, think, I felt like there was a little bit more thought went into this one. I feel like the first one's good, and he, and he makes and Bong makes a great mascot, which he was the Turbo Graphics sixteen mascot for a while. But I just feel kind of like that first game was a little, little too easy. I guess just a, a little too just button mashy, and you win. Like there was really no kind of. Uh, no uh, strategy to it. I felt like this one was a little more thought out with as far as like the level design and, you know, things like that. 
but I think if the first one had not, like, the first one laid the foundation yeah. of what to do. And I think feel like the developers were like, okay, this is a good base on what we can do. Now let's expand on it. And, and that's wonder, what became Bonk's Revenge. And I just wonder why, the because like I said, Bonk made a really good, uh, you know, mascot for Turbo Graphics 16. I just wonder why the Turbo Graphics just never, why it never took off quite like, you know, Sega did and and Nintendo did with you know with Mario and and Sonic. You know, he's definitely not a t- top tier mascot, but he's definitely recognizable. Well, you know, you talk about in the past with Star Tropics, like what would have happened had Nintendo committed a little more to Star Tropics or maybe released the sequel for the Super Nintendo. I wonder what would have happened if the Bonk games were made by Nintendo. It feels like a and, Nintendo and, game. No, it, it really <laughs> does. And I, I, I kept thinking to myself as I was playing this game, I feel like Bonk would have made like a kind of a cool cartoon series. Yeah. Back in the early 90s, like not I don't want to compare it to the Flintstones because of the prehistoric setting, but I, I feel like you could have made enough characters to build around him and you could have done like a cool you know, maybe like for smaller children who are like fascinated with dinosaurs and everything. You could have done something with that, yeah. I think. And before we get corrected, I, I do know that, you know, they did put Bonk games on the yeah, NES. Yeah, and Bonk's Revenge was on the Game Boy. Yeah. Specifically. So I but it's more known for being on the Turbo Graphics, mm-hmm. at least in my opinion. So I, just, I like I wonder what would have happened had it been a Nintendo specific yeah. property and then you know, had that the Nintendo machine behind it. Because I do remember going to Toys R Us back in the late nineties, uh, uh, late night, the early, late eighties, early nineties, and you know the the video game section for uh, Toys R Us, they would actually have the co- the consoles set up to where you could play them. Like you go in and they'd have you know the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis, and they of course they'd have a Sur- Turbo Graphics sixteen, and I would sit and play Bonk on the Turbo Graphics 16 and and sometimes they would have different games in there like sometimes they would have a like uh, like Panzer Dragoon or some whatever some whatever some of the other games were like some of the shooters that they had for the Turbo Graphics 16 and I always wanted one like a Turbo Graphics 16 was just a good system I just never I, don't, I guess cuz I was a kid and I just didn't have the money and you know my parents weren't going to buy me one because i already had a super nintendo but i was very interested in the turbo graphics 16 maybe maybe that was the fate of the turbo graphics 16 it just never could overcome you know people buying super nintendos for their kids and it wasn't like it is today where people have multiple consoles like back then you got one console and that was it for like six seven eight years well when you have games like mario world and Link to the past and others like it's not to bash the other consoles but like it's there's no comparison yeah to me but not to discredit bonk's revenge because i i actually have have had a lot of fun playing this and even the first one but i i'm with you i liked this game better it there's a little more strategy that goes into this game you know with bonk's adventure you're just kind of you know, strolling through each stage, you might jump up and, you know, use it. So Bonk's ability for those who've never played the games is he's a prehistoric kid with a giant head. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you can either headbutt or you can jump up and then land head first on your enemies and you get um, power ups when you eat pieces of meat. Mm. So like if you eat a small piece, you just get stronger. You can spit fire out of your mouth and you're just like, you're stronger. Like if you hit the ground, enemies around you will freeze but if you eat a big piece it makes you temporarily invincible so kind of like the star power up with the mario games you stay invincible for a little while and then you get powered down to as if you ate a small piece and then if you get hit you revert back to normal so they they definitely took some of that mario strategy i feel but it doesn't feel like a carbon copy of a Mario game, if that makes sense. Like, yeah, it's the same formula, but it's different enough to where I'm not like, oh, this is just a Mario knockoff. This sucks. I'm going to put it down. I, I like, and maybe it's because I was a fan of the Flintstones growing up, but I I liked that prehistoric setting. And I liked how, you know, in 
world one, you're in this like flower field with waterfalls that you have to climb up and everything. Then you go to like, um, uh, what was, I think the second world was like a jungle type mm-hmm. area. And then you go to a snowy mountain, then you go to a beach. That's what I like about these old school platformers is that you go, it offers a variety of yeah. different levels and situations and puzzles to figure out where it's not just a carbon copy of the same level. Like that's every level feels, I won't say drastically, but quite different. Yeah. And I really like that a lot. And something you don't see in games anymore is the whole caveman aesthetic. Because back then you had games like this, you had games like Joe and Mac, prehistoric man, caveman games, things like that. And Joe and Mac was a pretty big property back then. Mm-hmm. I think maybe that was kind of like the Super Nintendo answer to to Bonk. I do remember Joe and Mac. I I think I played them uh, played that game a little bit. I never owned it, but I, I it was a game that I rented. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. yeah, and and played it for for a little bit. It wasn't bad, from what I can remember. Maybe we should review that. I, I'd love to go back and and play that again because that's something I have not played since. I think it's on the the Switch eShop, Might or be. on the Switch Online. I think it is. I have to look that up. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty confident that that it is. But, um, other things, um. I'm trying to think of what else I can say about this game. Yeah, Tyler says it is on there, so that okay. makes things yeah. easy. Yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. Um, what else to say about this game? Um, it, it does borrow a little bit from Zelda in the sense that your your health is measured in hearts. Mm-hmm. And this one of my gripes with the games is it's pretty stingy when it comes to to your health like yeah, i do remember that playing this you, especially so you can play it in different difficulties there's beginner where you only play through the first stage but you have like eight or nine hearts then you have intermediate where you go through the first four levels where you have like five or six then you have expert where you only have three and that can be a little challenging because you might find one heart that you can pick up through the entire level. But the cool thing is you get these coins that you can collect uh, throughout each level. And when you beat the boss, you have the opportunity to do uh, a bonus game. And I think you have to collect at least 10 in order to do that. And you're basically put on this train where you can collect you know, little hearts to improve your health. And then you get an extra life um, at the end. So... It's going back to that strategic kind of deal about it that I actually really like. Because even with the boss fights, you know, in the, the first boss you fight is this um, this giant prehistoric turtle, like turtle slash dragon, that has a volcano for a shell. So it'll shoot fireballs out at you before it you know comes out of the ground and you have to stomp on its head. And it might switch, like its head might be on the left side of the screen. Then when it reverts, goes back underground then when it comes back up, it might be on the right side of the screen. And you have to be pretty precise with how you aim because it's it's not one of those things where if you like just hit like a general area, it'll cause damage. No, you have to be very specific yeah. on how you aim. And I've, I learned that the hard way the first time I played <laughs> this game. But I mean, that, that's how those games were back then. Yeah, and, and this game has some really nice graphics to it too. Uh, mm-hmm. that's one thing you could say for the turbo graphics 16 even they they touted that they were a 16-bit system but they weren't really they were just an 8-bit system with like a 16-bit processor or whatever but they could they could squeeze some pretty good uh graphics and music out of that system it looks like a very very good nes game yeah it's almost like 12-bit is what the turbo graphics was yeah that, that's kind of what i i feel like and I, i've dabbled around with a couple of other games on the turbo graphics mini as well and it's pretty consistent it seems like it's like somewhere between the nes and the super nintendo but it's you know better than one but not quite as good as as the other yeah i mean everybody who is into shooters loves that console like that is if you're into shooters that is the console to have I know at some point, because I know we talked about, you know, 
getting the the turbo graphics back to you i i do want to play through the the wise games that mm-hmm. axe blade mentioned and once once i do that then i'll i'll ship it back to you okay and we can kind of you know trade off on turbo graphics reviews i know sometimes we can get a little caught up with like nes yeah <laughs> super nintendo and we might occasionally do like playstation or n64 or the genesis but aka I, I, sonic but i do have coming my way uh joey image is sending me a dreamcast Ooh. Uh, i'm i traded him a a saturn console for it so we're we're sending we're sending each other our our prospective consoles this week and i should be getting it in the next couple days and uh hopefully i'll have some dreamcast stuff to review soon yeah no that'd be great though dreamcast is so underrated i've never played it and i'm so excited i can't wait for it to get here it's like christmas i want to know your thoughts on the controller when you get it because it it's a very unconventional looking and feeling controller so i'm curious to get your thoughts on it well you know i love big weird controllers like i still love the duke you know the original xbox controller i love that controller everybody else hated it but i i like weird controllers i mean i just didn't like it because it's like twice the size of my hands (laughs) well i got you know big meaty paws so big controllers are, are nice i like it was like like me and Wally say it's like holding a can ham. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's why I like the GameCube controller is that it's smaller and it just like fits perfectly yeah. into my like little child hands. <laughs> uh, but I'm excited for that. I can't wait to play some uh, some Dreamcast stuff. Uh, I really want to play uh, Code Veronica, so I think I may uh, that might be the first one I review for the Dreamcast. Okay, no, that'd be great. But uh, overall, uh, what I would say about Bonk is the graphics are great. I think it plays very well. It's, I want to say marginally better than Box Adventure, but it is noticeably better. In the sense, like we were saying before, I think the developers took the foundation of Adventure and then improved on it and did something more with it. So I personally really liked playing Bonk's Revenge. I I want to keep playing it a little bit more. I want to see if I can beat it. I've come close to it. I've got to a little over halfway. Mm-hmm. So hopefully I can go through and complete it. But I think scale of one to ten, I'd probably give it a solid like seven and a half. That's good. You might if you don't have a Turbo Graphic 16 or a Turbo Graphic 16 Mini. Uh, and you want to play Bonk's Revenge, you might have to go other routes because I just looked up the TurboGrafx-16 Mini and what they're going for these days. Holy monkeys. How much is it? Oh, their lowest price I've seen is two ninety nine ninety nine. What? Like they you were a hundred bucks for that. when they came out. Yeah, no. Like, that's crazy. I, I can't stand that. But I'm not surprised, though. I mean, I, I was going to say, like, right, I think this, the TurboGrafx-16 Mini it was very much worth the purchase when they came out because not only does it have the TurboGrafx-16 stuff, but you can switch it to where it, it turns into the PC Engine, which was the Japanese version of the TurboGrafx-16. You had all the Japanese versions of those games, plus some that didn't come out in America. So I, I, if you got the money and you just got 300 bucks you want to burn, you can go get a TurboGrafx-16 Mini these days. But, man, I don't know why they didn't make more. Like, why can't I just go to Walmart and get one of these? I can still go get a Genesis. Like, right now I can go to Walmart and get a Genesis Mini. Because Sega did it right. Yeah, I guess so. So something we were talking about earlier, because you, you – reminded me to look i'm looking at the philips cdi on ebay okay let me look you this want up. you want to guess how much these are going for let me just take a wild guess before i hit return here uh i'm gonna say 300 dollars. there is one for 300 oh, okay there, so there's one, it's a CDI with digital video installed controller and games. It doesn't say how many for $182. Okay, and I'm looking at one here that actually has like a normal looking controller. Mm-hmm. I've never seen this controller before. The only one I've seen is the other one. 
that looks like a like a weird TV remote. Or like a Star Trek phaser. <laughs> Have you seen it? It's like it's the only yeah. thing I can compare it to is it looks like a like a, a Star Trek the Next Generation phaser is what it looks like. I was thinking the same thing too. <laughs> like how would you use that to play a game? I have no idea. You can get a set of seven games for the CDI for a hundred bucks. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's not Okay, so so here here are the games, and I can't believe this. So we have uh, Hanna Barbera's Cartoon Carnival, mm. which has Scooby Doo, uh, Huckleberry Hound, Fred Flintstone, Yogi Bear, and George Jetson on the cover. Mm-hmm. We have uh, the Wacky World of Mini Golf with with Eugene Levy. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, literally, it, it shows a picture of a shark trying to eat a golf ball, and it says the wacky world of miniature golf with Eugene Levy. Why Eugene Levy, of all people? I have no idea. I and guess he needs the money. What does he have to do with golf? I have no idea. Like, if I want to play mini golf, I'll just go actually play mini golf. <laughs> uh, we have the Berenstein Bears, which I, I love those books as a kid. I didn't know they had a game. Uh, we have Lemmings, Little Devil. Spelled D I V I L, and get this, a video game adaptation of the Naked Gun two and a half. What? <laughs> I'm not <laughs> lying. Look, look, let me here. I'm gonna send you this. This, I don't understand. Uh, I'll, I'll throw it in the chat. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm looking at, at some of the, the. Right. eBay I just put it in there. Here. Like, this is so weird. I, I, I just don't. <laughs> I don't understand these. Collect- oh, they have the Zelda game for for no way would I pay two hundred and seventy five dollars for this game. Uh, they do have Space Ace for uh, seventy nine ninety seven. That might be the only game worth playing on here if it's like the arcade version. weird <sighs> just god bless the if cdi you're out there listening to this right now just don't expect us to do any reviews of cdi games anytime soon uh i don't know like i, I don't hate tyler watson's idea of playing the dark triforce <laughs> i mean maybe i'll look watch a playthrough of it on youtube or something but i'm not gonna <laughs> play it we could just do that and then spend like 10 minutes ranting on how bad it is. We could just, uh, how long are the playthrough? Let me just add a just sheer morbid curiosity. I'm going to say 35 minutes. Okay, let's see. Zelda. Be my guess. Let's see. I... Let's, see. let's just do the I can't scenes wait. and see how long this would take. Uh, let's see. CD is he sell this CDI all cut scenes? 18 minutes, 39 seconds. We could do a commentary track for it. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm, I would do that. I'll spend yeah, I'm, 18 I'm minutes getting. of my life on this. And I'll say this. If links not, if he doesn't have the same personality as he does in the cartoon, I'm going to riot. It looks so bad. It looks like these graphics were made in MS Paint. They probably weren't made in software that was much more advanced than no. Paint. <laughs> That's so bad. Well, yeah. let's start to wrap this thing up because we're going yeah. off the rails here. So, yeah, and I know you got to get out a little early too. And, so. Uh, so, Bonk's Revenge, everybody, catch it. Yep, go go <laughs> play Bonk's Revenge. Don't play the Zelda CDI games. Go uh, play Bonk's Revenge. It's available in stores now. uh but what's going on with uh oh and before we go i do want to tell everybody don't forget you can send us voicemails i want to start doing a voicemail segment at the end of the show so you can send us those at anchor.fm.nerdcave slash nerdcave retro go follow us over at anchor.fm you can follow us uh it's the first tab on the link tree you can get to which i'm going to change to nerdcaveretro.com i'm going to do that this week nerdcaveretro.com will take you straight to our link tree and i'll put the anchor.fm in there so you can go to our anchor.fm site just record us a voice message right there and anchor and uh keep it under 30 seconds to a minute and we'll do a uh we'll do a section at the end of the show with you guys 
sending us voice messages. So go do that if you would. Thank you. And uh, Derek, what's going on with uh, feature presentation? Even though we did talk about it at the beginning, we'll we'll end with it too. Yeah, so the episode will drop um, tonight at 8 p.m. if you're watching the show live. Uh, but more importantly, though, well, I'll, I'll throw the social plugs out real quick. Uh, you can follow the show on social at Feature Press Pod, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, we have nailed down the filming dates for my next movie called The Feature, which we will film the 13th and 14th of August. So we'll be doing that. And then uh, hopefully we'll have it edited by early fall, maybe like early October. Uh, I'll probably do some kind of premiere for it and then start submitting it to festivals. So everything's uh, coming along pretty well with it. So awesome. we'll see what happens. And uh, go check out Open Micers op- at Open Micers on Twitter and Instagram. Last week we had another hostful episode, but coming up soon we've got nothing but guests for like the next month and a half. So last week we had our July 4th memories where uh, you can go listen to the story of when I was an EMT. And uh, uh, July 4th I actually entered the Twilight Zone. So go check out that episode. And also, if you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen Monsters Anonymous, go to at Help the Monsters on Twitter or Facebook.com slash Help the Monsters and just follow the link at the top of the page, uh, the, the pinned uh, post there on Facebook and Twitter. That'll take you straight to the YouTube page, and you can watch it right there on YouTube. Um, so just go check it out if you've never seen it, and uh, leave us a... Leave us a comment. I've got comments turned on, so you can tell us if you love it. And if you hate it, I'm sorry, but uh, just, you know, don't say anything if you hate it. (laughs) But that's going to do it. That's going to do it for this week. Uh, So, Derek, anything else before we leave for this week? I think we're good. Let's get out of here. If you would like to email us, email us at nerdcaveretro at gmail.com. We are at nerdcaveretro.com. And we are at Facebook, facebook.com slash NerdCaveRetro, Instagram and Twitter at NerdCaveRetro and individually at JFunktastic and at Derek underscore Diamond. Of course, ncrmerch.com. I just dropped the Planet Juice shirts. Go get a Planet Juice t-shirt. It's awesome. It looks kind of like the uh, the Planet Fitness Planet logo. Fitness. But not so close that we'll get sued. But people will look at it and say, what is that Planet Fitness? What is Planet Juice? And then you have a conversation starter. So go go get a t-shirt or a mug or whatever you want. ncrmerch.com. Also, patreon.com slash nerdcaveretro. And leave us a review wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. So Derek, please tell them what it's all about. May the way of the hero lead to the Triforce. Yes. I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. And that was an episode. All right. Right at 58 minutes. That is a good length right there. Yep. That's right, what she guys. said. Well, thank you all for hanging out with us. Um, I got to get going because I have to go to a comedy competition tonight at Kahuna's in Ocean Springs. So if you're watching this live and you're near Ocean Springs and you want to come hang out and watch me do comedy, hang on, uh, go come hang out with me at Kahuna's in Ocean Springs. And uh, Derek... Let's bid everybody a good night, and we'll see you guys next week.